This is probably the most versatile and quickest install that you will ever see. What's up y'all? So today I'm going to be showing you the process of how I install a flip over wig. Right now we are getting ready to braid her hair down. Her hair has been shampooed and blow dried and I'm leaving out this very front section all across her hairline. When it comes to flip over wigs, you can choose how much hair you leave out. The more hair you leave out, I think the more realistic and more versatile. But usually the goal is to have as minimal leave out as possible. The great thing about flip over wigs is the fact that you can choose whether you would like to wear your hair out or you can use it like a headband wig. So you can just braid the front section away and tuck it away and wear a headband with it. So this is the inside of the wig. I sewed it on a sewing machine and i didn't add a combs of course because we are going to be sewing it down that is why i did the very front braids her anchor braids a bit smaller than the rest because i want to make sure that it is very secure before i officially apply the wig i'm spraying an anti-hair loss spray you can also apply scalp oil at this point so right now i am trying to find an empty spot within the wig so that i can sew it down I believe I sewed down in between, but not on the very edge, but you can feel free to sew on the very edge of the wig. Both options are fine because you do want it to be flat as possible. So right now we're at the step where we're going to start blending her hair with the wig. We decided to do a wash and go. And if I was going to redo this, I would actually take her to the shampoo bowl and just wet her hair and saturate it. That would, of course, without getting her scalp wet, but saturate it because that would make it much quicker when it comes to applying products and defining the curls on the wig and on her hair. But right now we are starting with styling foam and I'm going to follow that with adding a little bit of gel on the ends. Now, if you want your hair or your wig to be super defined, it's usually better to just define the wig before applying it. And when I say define it, I mean going line by line and applying the gel and foam so that way you get a very defined look that will last longer. And to take it a step further, I would even sit under the dryer before you apply it. That way your hair is less frizzy, it's not as big, and it really has a defined look. Curly hair tends to expand over time. It's just the nature of the extensions. So you may have to do more than one session of defining your hair, defining the curls. Like I said earlier, if you apply gel and foam and dry it, sit under the dryer or have your wig sit under the dryer, your curls will definitely last longer. Foam is more of a temporary whole thing. And if you do nothing, then your hair is definitely going to look a bit frizzy and th to me that's a look too it just depends on your tastes and how you like your hair so right now we are just defining her edges trying to make sure that it blends in i do see that her hair is a little bit darker so of course if your hair is darker then you want to probably dye that before you apply your wig but i don't think the color was too off from the wig as I mentioned earlier, setting your hair under the dryer allows your style to last longer. This applies to hair extensions and to your roll hair. It's kind of like back in the day when you did a roller set. Roller sets don't come out great when you just air dry them. They, they might be okay, but they come out the best whenever you sit them under the dryer and let them fully dry. So right now I'm doing some additional blending after it's dry. I like to back comb. Just to create a little bit of, I guess we would call it frizz at the base. And this allows it to not look like you can't see the base of the wig. Because sure, we can add more tracks to fill it in. But also, if the client doesn't want their hair to be too dense and thick, then backcombing is a good way to improve the coverage. We are finishing it off with trimming away some of the scragglers. Some of the hair that doesn't look in place and of course we're not going for a super sharp cut but we do want to take away some of the curls that are not fitting with the overall look this is the final look and i'm talking to her about different ways that she can style it this is how she did leave the salon but i got to see her throughout the weeks that she wore this and she styled it in so many unique ways especially 
her half up half down look she even did ponytails when it came to working out yeah she really rocked this look and i think having it sewn on makes it easier because you don't have to think about taking it off and on at night so it's literally like wearing a sew-in with minimal leave out with your real edges and you have some versatility like i mentioned earlier if you wanted a flatter look you may have to have more leave out so that it can be a little bit away from your hairline or you can also use a hair texture that's a little bit looser or straighter so that it's a bit flatter but then of course you run the risk of not being able to blend it so easily this is another way that i'm blending it i like to tuck the leave out in between the wig and that usually stays so i hope you guys enjoy this video i hope you learn something i hope you try out a flip over wig or flip over sewing for your next hair really? extension install so interesting i am interesting to see who comes out of this hair like who <laughs> who am i who am i with big hair energy that's what i want to know that's what the people want to know who am i <laughs>